Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and this is Charlie and today we are going to be doing the end of the year book tag. This tag was created by Ariel Bisset way back when, I believe it's about six years ago now and it has become a staple throughout Booktube. Uh, is there anything you would like to say before we get started Charlie? Just hello everybody on Charlie's channel. Oh, to be fair, that's true. You can find Charlie over at Charlie Book Reads and there should be a video <laughs> there as well. Anyway, I'm sure they already know that if they're watching. To be fair, we do talk about each other a lot. <laughs> Let us begin. Are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? I've got three books beside me that I've started. I've got Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This was I kind of started this like Halloween. Actually, as I started before, I feel like I, I don't know. I can't remember. My brain's not working today. Sorry, people. Um. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I had this, I bought this in the half price Waterstone sale. And then um, also this, I'm beginning to slowly work my way through. I got that from my bed. Catherine Rundell. Yeah, and it's got the Sparrow Rogers. This is the middle grade, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But did you really replace the torn copy that they sent you or did you keep it? No, I've kept, I can't, I haven't had time so far. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. Um, so I've got that, and then I've got a poetry collection I literally just started last night. And what's that one? If They Come For Us by Fatima Asghar. Which actually, there's, um, I think this author has a book out about sisters or something this year that they released. Right. I don't think. I think that's right. Okay. Shall I go through my audio? You can, do. It's, it's quite a list. Uh, it's the same for me when I look at the audio books as well. I started The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Sancho. Okay, that's Patterson Joseph. Um, um, this is my focus wasn't quite there when I started it. Um, and then I've got Julia as well by Sandra Newman. I was meant to be reading like a chapter a day of this with my husband. Um, but we listened to like a half a chapter. The children came home and then we haven't done any more um, on script because I forgot my script ones. Or not script because it's called Everland, isn't it? I have no idea. It's called Change. It's changed its name. Script has changed its name. Good for it. Yes, um, to Evelyn. And I started Quietly Hostile by Samantha Irby. Ah, yes. Um, I keep meaning to read her. Well, my stack of books that I have started and not finished is huge. Uh, and that is because I do have a propensity. I've settled back into some old habits of starting books and then just tossing them aside. So... We have The Big Four by Agatha Christie. I don't even know if I started reading that this year. I've absolutely no idea when I chose to read 27 pages of it. We have Outrageous by Paul Baker that I have wanted to read for most of the year. I started reading it in June. That's and a good book. And, you know, I really enjoyed Fabulosa. I want to get his next book, but I just haven't got onto it because I feel like it's going to make me upset and angry and I don't want to feel like that. Um, then I have Remainders of the Day by Sean Bithell and I read about 30 pages of this in July and then I just threw it at a wall. Um, a wall? Why did you throw it at a wall? No, just now I dropped it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, then I have one that I was supposed to be buddy reading with Charlie and you can see the dust flying off it. Um, which is My Soul Twin by Nino Harishvili, translated by Ruth... Ma uh, this one's translated by Charlotte Collins. I always get that one wrong. You just translated by Ruth, uh, Ruth Martin. They take it in turns, I think. Uh, then we have The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, which I was going to read one of the Hobbit and then the Lord of the Ring books throughout the end of 2023, and I still have not finished this one. This is only a recent edition, and that is No Love Lost by Rachel Ingalls. I was going to be reading one novella from this um, every day in the lead up to Halloween, and I read one novella and then put it aside for something else that I'll talk about later on. And then we have Fairy Tale by Stephen King, in which I read 120 pages and it still hadn't got to the plot that was mentioned on the blurb, and I decided that I didn't have time for that. Will I go back to it? I have absolutely no idea. I know you were annoyed by that one. I remember you being annoyed by that. I was annoyed by it, but it was also interesting for me to read based on the fantasy novel that you know about that I was writing last year. So they are all the books that I have started 
this year. And also on audiobook, we have And Another Thing by Owen Colfer, which is his continuation of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. Never the Bride by Paul Mars, which I have read before, and I was hoping to listen to this in the drive to Whitby, but my mother didn't want to. And then we have The Last Chronicle of Barset by Anthony Trollope, that I planned to read last month and didn't do that either. Next question. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I think we're supposed to do this a bit earlier than November, but um, so let's just say autumn or winter. Well, I think that Belladonna is quite autumnal because it is a middle grade fantasy and it's got death as a character. So uh, I've also got Equal Rights by Terry Pratchett that my lovely friend Jack from Spread Book Joy um, gave me. So that would be a good do your transitional book, Charlie. Or books. For me, it is one that I recently bought and that is The Winter Spirits, which is a whole host of writers. Last year we had The Haunting Season, which was a collection of short stories and I read one each Sunday in the run up to Christmas. This year, there are 12 stories in here, which is practically double what there were in the last one. And so I am hoping to read one every day this week and then from Sunday onwards, read one every week. Because it was just something that I really enjoyed doing last year, was just having a ghost story to read every Sunday evening. And I don't... Short stories work so well with. I feel like short stories, especially in the sort of autumn, autumn winter time, are just so, like, perfect. It's the perfect time to... Like, none of the stories go over 30 pages either, so it's it also feels like they're the perfect length just for, like, half an hour. Um, beautiful just... cover. Sorry? Beautiful cover oh, and yeah, beautiful no, sponges. But... The cover for this one and the cover for the other one are just fantastic. And I really do recommend them. And yeah, so that's that one for me. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? Not that I can think of. Yeah, that's the same for me. I I went and I looked this morning and no. But, but then also this year, I have to say that I haven't really been heading towards many new releases. Like I got the ones that I wanted um you know, Kate Atkinson's short story collection, I have that end of list, nothing um, really. I've got quite a, new, a few new ones that I've brought, obviously, recently, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't know in terms of anything ahead of me that's being released, um, yeah, nothing that I can think of. So what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Obviously, I want to, I really, really want to read this, obviously. Yeah. I know I've the Belladonna one that I've showed you, but um. This is like I'm, I'm I'm struggling obviously reading at the moment, but this is um I'm just reading a few pages here and there, and it's it's really really good. So yeah, definitely this one. Probably Julia. I want to uh, I pick as one of them, and then a nonfiction. I'm, I love nonfiction at the moment, so um probably either a girlhood or um cells. I think you. Yeah, well, but for me. I mean, apart from all of the books that I showed that I, you know, I would like to get them finished and the one that I've just shown as well, I am currently reading Want to Finish When Will There Be Good News by Kate Atkinson. And the other book that I've got here is also by Kate Atkinson, which is A Good God in Ruins. And Back on your Kate Atkinson role. I am. And that's become almost my aim. So it's, it's just to try and get through all of the Kate Atkinsons that I haven't read. And so after When Will There Be Good News, I think I have four left. Yeah. Oh, that's um, good. That's amazing. You've done loads in this year, haven't you? Yes. Well, the, the I did also reacquire Transcription, which I read a few years ago. And I liked, but I wasn't the biggest fan of. But I thought that th- there's part, something <laughs> within me that's a bit of a completionist at the moment. And I'm thinking if I can finish that and I can finish the short story collection, um, the, then the only thing left would be another short story collection that I haven't been able to find yet. Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favourite book of the year? Yes, there is. There's um, Family Meal by Brian Washington. I feel like it's one of my most anticipated reads because I heard about it a little while ago. I think both of us did, didn't we? Yes. And even though I know you're not, you know, that's a whole conversation. Yeah. That. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I heard about it, and um, the premise of it just sounds so good. It was when we went um, to Hey On Why, that was the one book that I was really interested in getting. And when I went in and actually spoke to this, the bookseller, um, 
one of his friends had read read it and literally just loved it. So it's, it has made me even more excited. I just want to save it for when my brain can actually take it, though. So um, I'm kind of like waiting for my brain to get in the right headspace. But I think it might be quite sad, though. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's who, be made- who doesn't want to be sad in December? I mean, I don't really want to be sad in December, being honest. But um, <laughs> I do like books that kind of emote. Yes. <laughs> um, is that right? Who, what? Well, is no. All right? well, I was going to say is, as somebody who has spent many years avoiding emotion, um, it does take a lot. Uh, but similarly to what you're saying about a book that you think could make you um, emotional, I'm going with... A God in Ruins by Kate Atkinson. Only right, this is one that I don't know about. I feel like it could shock me, but I also feel like it might not. The only reason being that a few people have said that this was a book that they really enjoyed from Kate Atkinson and that it did run them through the ringer emotionally. But as as many people as have said that have also said to me that they didn't enjoy it. And I know a couple of Kate Atkinson fans who've been reading her since the start of her career who have said that they didn't enjoy this one. So I feel like with that one, though, it's got so much to live up to because obviously it's kind of the second in a se- like, not series, but do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and um, the, because um, Life After Life was just such a phenomenal book. I fucking love that book. So, yeah, yeah I, I did, I did DNF that book, but yeah. only because, only because the audio book. So I feel like it's probably the audio book. It's one of those where, having now read so much Kate Atkinson, I'm aware that sometimes she puts similar plots into her books. And in some instances, I found that annoying. In others, I've been like, well, that's okay, because I've enjoyed the reliability. It's comforting. It's like a comfort factor to it. So it could go either way with this one. I I hope you love it. I do too. Um, But at the same time, um, at the moment, it is really just about completing the Kate Atkinson books. And maybe she will do something different. However, I have seen already um, mentions of Yorkshire and Scotland. And my goodness, if the last three books ha- that I've read by her haven't just been <laughs> all Yorkshire and Scotland. I don't mind. I like Whitby. Anyway, this brings us to our final question. <laughs> it on a roll. Yay. Have you already started making reading plans for 2024? The only so-called plans that I have for 2024 is uh, just the, um, I guess, the women's prize. So I always kind of know that, like, I want to do, to do that. So it's not really, I haven't obviously, I don't know what, in terms of actual books that are going to be on there, obviously none of us know what's going to be on there. Um, but there's obviously non-fiction going to be uh, the new non-fiction prize. So I'm super excited for that. I feel like that's going to mix up mix things up a little, a little bit and um, so yeah that's the only thing I can really think of I don't know if there's any new releases there might be things but how about you Charlie for me I think that if I if I was making any plans then I'm not likely to announce them because every time I planned something this year I mentioned it on this channel and then I just didn't follow through with that in like the converse to you I'm hoping to try and avoid prizes next year I tried it a little this year and found that I did get sucked into it. But then I also found that I became a bit derogatory towards those prizes then because I felt You've like... in and out of them, haven't yeah, you? You've kind of... I, I, like, I feel like last year I really focused on them and the year before too. But then I was looking at my reading. I was thinking, I've got all these books on my shelves, but I haven't really read any of them. And you've talked to me about that this year when you've you know been laughing with me each week about the fact that I've got more books out the library or more books from the charity shop, despite the fact I've been saying I want to read the ones on my shelves. So I think that really, touch wood, that will be a plan that I try and focus on next year is just going through my shelves and reading the books on there first, because um, it's like I'm, I, I go looking for books which will have a certain emotion and remind me of something else. And there will be the perfect book on those shelves because there's so many unread and yeah. like I'll just go to the library. I'll Google it. I feel like we'll always support the library, though. Whatever we do, we always do that because that's what that's what we're like. So. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm like I'm, I'm not saying not go to the library. I'll, a few of the Kate Atkinsons <laughs> I've read this year have been from the library, and um, 
but I, I'd say that that's more of the thing as well. It's like, um, if there's been a new release this year, then I've got it from the library, like when we buddy read um, In Memoriam earlier in the year, and I've now got that Emma Donoghue one that I can't, I don't know whether you finished it or not, but no. <laughs> well, anyway, that's in my room. Uh, I don't know whether I get to renew it again or whether someone's ordered it, but I got that. So, um, yeah, so I think that's more what I'm hoping to do is avoid prizes and read what I already have because um, plan, Charlie. This maybe year, I should and do the same thing apart from the women's prize yes. apart from the women's prize yes um and you know th th there could be something that i see on one of these prize lists that's absolutely you know that i have had an interest in and i want to go and read but um currently my plan is to avoid the prizes so that i don't continue to be the cynical old bugger that i'm becoming I mean, that's no fun. You're definitely going to continue to be a cynical. That's what that's what uh, that's what Charlie's and Char Charlie and Charlie is. I know, <laughs> but you know, you're never going to get rid of your cynicism, Charlie. I don't believe it. No, but I'm just like you know, Mistress Il Isabel Brooks over here. Yeah, I'm in my I'm in my congenial era. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. Anyway, in a shock to most people, we managed to finish this video <laughs> in a rather short amount of time. All I will say is that we should have a video going live on Charlie's channel at some point. Um, whenever that's there, I will leave a link to that in the description. If you have read any of these books and recommend, well, could, for me personally, recommend where to go because I'm, which of these books should I finish? Because we have a lot unread. Um, the same for me. If there's any of the ones I've shown or if there's anything that you think that either the Charlies need to read by the end of the year, that you you know our taste, I know that they do. So if you can think of any books that you want to recommend to us, we're happy to look at that. Or if you've I read any of them. The never ending list of recommendations that we will one day get to. <laughs> No, I feel like no, we're gonna start we're gonna be stuck like, from this video onwards, we're gonna be writing them down. The Charlie and Charlie in the recommendations for it. We'll, I'll write um, I'll write them down. Oh, okay. I'll I'll keep a log of the people of the recommendations people have put for us and we'll start maybe next year we'll have a project that we can pick them out occasionally. Okay. We're go we're going to allow people to influence our reading. As I mean... said, I'm not making any plans for my reading. These are the <laughs> these are the kind of things that Charlie inflicts on me. <laughs> It's like out of the blue one day I'll get a message. Do you DNF? Have to... That's I'm never saying you don't DNF, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, but she'll like, um, yeah, I'll get a message. Do you have this book? Does your library have this book? Um, I want to read it. Shall we read it together? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> you do, I swear. Anyway, um, we will avoid we will avoid talking about that for now and we will just go again um off stage and have an argument. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.